Welcome to Acoustic Design Principles and Applications. This will be a three-part lecture. Acoustical design is a planning, shaping, finishing, and furnishing of an enclosed space to establish an acoustic environment that's necessary for the distinct hearing of speech or musical sounds. Sound requires a source, a path, and a receiver in order to exist. It begins from a vibrating source, travels through the air, and ends at our ears. So when an object vibrates, like a tree falling in the woods, the sound waves radiate outwards equally in all directions until they hit something that will either absorb them or reflect them. If there's nothing, nothing to receive the sound, then no sound exists. The vibration of vocal cords is what produces human speech. Your tongue, your lips, and your teeth then modify these sounds. Sound power is the magnitude of sound. A decibel is the measure of loudness. A person's perception of loudness depends not only on the sound power, but the distance from the source of the sound the ear is as well. Sound waves will travel at different speeds through different mediums. Sound will travel faster through air than it will through wood. Sound energy is like heat and can be either absorbed or reflected. This has a direct impact on how a person's hearing things within a space. When sounds are reflected, they'll mix together creating a noisy space. Speech becomes difficult to hear, but music will sound better. When sounds are absorbed, the room is quiet for speech, but music may sound flat. Reverberation is what happens when sound remains after the source has ceased, which comes from repeated reflections. This will affect both the quality of speech and music. Smaller rooms should have a reverberation time about a reverberation time of about 0.3 to 0.6, while auditoriums and larger rooms should have a reverb time about 1.5 to 1.8. You can control these times by modifying the amount of absorptive materials or reflective finishes within a space. Echoes occur in large spaces when there's a delay in the sound being reflected back. This requires a very long distance and the right amount of reflective surfaces. You can also avoid echo through the planning of the room shape and by using absorptive materials. Sound reinforcement is when sound is amplified through the design of the space. Sound absorbing materials should be placed at the front or re and rear of the room to lessen the need for electronic sound systems. So you basically design a space so that someone can hear a speaker from the back of the room without having to use a microphone. Curved surfaces will focus sound. A space that has a concave surface like a dome can become what we call a whispering gallery. This is basically a room where two, two people can stand at opposite ends, related focal points of the curved surface, and they can hear each other's whispers with loudness and clarity while remaining unheard by somebody not too far away or standing in the middle of the space. Now interior designers mainly focus on reducing noise, and this can be done first by locating active areas away from quiet areas, and also through careful planning of the floor plan. Using soft, porous materials like wall coverings, carpet, and window treatments that will cut down unwanted noise from a space. You also may want to consider the acoustical needs of um, presentation rooms like classrooms, conference rooms, libraries, lecture halls, etc., or the needs for multifamily residential um, residences and hotels, and even walls in single family homes that will separate maybe a bedroom from a living space. Okay, so that's the end of part one. Next, sound absorption and transmission in interior space.